Hi, good morning once again to all our viewers as we join you live from Sri Hari Kota. This is the Satish Dhawan Space Center and the public viewing gallery to be specific. Where in exactly two hours from now, or rather less to be specific, you will see the spacecraft launch right from here. This is India's ambitious first sun mission aditya l1 and this is coming after the success of chandrayaan 3 in less than 10 days is so clearly on the roll as our scientists are gearing up for some very ambitious missions this year yes india is all set to explore the sun and exceedingly important of the comprehensive data that is drawn from this particular mission where the experiments will be performed for over 5 years now this particular mission where the spacecraft will uh, take over 4 months or 125 days to be able to reach its designated point that is uh, in the halo orbit around l1 lagridge point 1 which uh, is also been chosen because this will provide an uninterrupted view to the sun and remember there are seven payloads on this very spacecraft that weighs a little more than 1500 kgs in these seven payloads four that uh, will uh, be directly observing the sun and three that will perform in situ experiments of the particles why this particular experiment uh, is important or this mission is important is because the sun has a direct impact on the earth and uh, in the longer run it will be better to be able to understand the changes in the earth's climate and satellite communication as we understand the sun better joining us on the broadcast are our guests uh, mr suresh nayak he's a senior space scientist and dr shivani verma space science and technology joining us uh, live from the national capital as uh, you join us in this very momentous build up uh, we are all waiting with bated breath for uh, the launch of aditya l1 uh, mr nayak if i can come to you first to really get a sense of the seven payloads that have been installed in this spacecraft um what will be the series of experiments that will be performed coronal heating uh, coronal mass ejaculation flare ups that we are to understand uh, by performing these experiments and extremely important from earth's point of view explain to us yeah actually you know there are seven payloads on uh, this uh, aditya one and out of which four payloads will be looking at uh, the sun all the time and the remaining three payloads will be studying the l1 point around which the aditya l1 is orbiting so that is the first thing to understand now there are four payloads i said looking at the sun those are very most i mean the most important ones one is the payload which will study the uh, reflected light from coming from sun the heat coming from sun's outer uh, corona as well as the solar activity magnetic field and so on and uh, the first one is in visible as well as near infrared wavelength band second one is uh, going to study this in the ultraviolet band third one is going to study in the low energy x rays band and the fourth one is going to study high energy x rays band now let us see now what kind of information or what kind of data these uh, you know four payloads will provide now visible what i said is an advantage uh, to you know the is directly looking at the sun so you can uh, get very clear pictures and uh, it will be easier to study because you can get them quickly then solar flares solar flares are a phenomena which happen when the sunspot activity cycle which is a 11 year cycle increases and decreases so when the solar sunspots increase then Uh, that is the peak of the solar cycle and when they reduce in number that is the trough and this happens once in 11 years right now we are in the maximum peak of the solar cycle so uh, from there a lot of uh, the solar flares are emitted now the solar flares you know they contain very high energy particles like uh, electron protons etc and this travel at a very high velocity of light and they can come to earth 
and uh, they can, as you mentioned earlier, uh, they damage um, our satellites, they can damage um, our uh, electrical uh, grid, and uh, basically uh, the uh, infrastructures for communication, etc. So we have to preempt, if you want to preempt these kind of damages, you know, we should get advance warning. And uh, these payloads, uh, actually more number of them, these are sort of doing multiple activities, different payloads are doing, concentrating on similar things. They are giving, I mean, this most important information. Then coming to the near infrared. You see, near infrared, whatever we cannot uh, study in the visible band, uh, it is adjacent to visible. So some of the heat is penetrating to the uh, adjacent band, that is the chromosphere. And that region we can study by means of near infrared. Then I said ultraviolet. Ultraviolet is mostly important to study the magnetic activity of sun. Now, why it is necessary? Because this magnetic activity can directly impact Earth's magnetic activity. And as you know, our Earth's atmosphere and magnetic field are two most important protective measures there. And we must know what is happening to our magnetic activity to also take care about some of the damages which may happen. And then I said low energy exhaustic. This is vital for corona heating. What is corona heating? You know, there are three layers uh, in the outer part of the sun. One is the photosphere. Photosphere gives Earth the light and the heat which is required. Then there is actually that is the temperature of 6000 degrees Celsius. Then there is a chromosphere in between and outermost is the corona. So corona temperature is as high as 2 million degrees Celsius. Now from 6000 degrees Celsius at the photosphere to 2 million degrees Celsius, how this corona is getting heated? This is a puzzling question for years for many scientists. And this is what low energy X-ray and this X-ray bandwidth itself is going to find out what is the reason. And the solar wind. Now, I told about the solar flares earlier. Now, solar wind keeps happening all the time, continuously. And this also contains uh, the some of the harmful uh, particle, charged particles. They travel at around 400 kilometers per second. But they also, they can create solar storms. Again, there will be some problems about our infrastructure, communication system, etc. So that also is going to be very important. And the high energy spectrometer is uh, studying the X-ray emissions, including associated with energetic events like solar flares and corona mass ejection. Coronal mass ejection is ejecting huge amount of tons of uh, amount of material into the space. And that also is going to be harmful. And uh, corona and another thing is plasma. Studying plasma because when this corona heating is so high, plasma is created, we want to study the plasma. And that will tell us how this high temperature of 2 million degrees Celsius on the corona will be maintained. So in short, you know, this is the uh, description of the payload. And this is what functions they are supposed to be doing.